Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Talk Gnosis. This is part four of our conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Kupperman about the Rosicrucians. In the last episode, we talked about some modern Rosicrucian orders, or later Rosicrucian orders, and we started talking about how Rosicrucian are those orders, actually. This uh, conversation picks up where that one left off when we discuss what their relationship is, the modern Rosicrucian order's relationship is to older Rosicrucian ideas. We uh, take some time to talk about Rosicrucian symbolism, uh, especially the rose and the cross, and we uh, kind of talk about how Gnosticism may or may not be related to Rosicrucianism. The answer might surprise you. And then at the end, we give a little secret information about the Rosicrucian Society Jeffrey may or may not be starting. So stick around. Check that out coming up on Talk Nurses. And you see that with modern Golden Dawn groups, with, with modern OTO groups. Well, they've moved this far away from the original material. Are they still this? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you saw it with, with Wicca in, in the 80s and the rise of eclectic Wicca. Well, in, in the 60s, 70s, but especially in the 80s and the witch wars, where you, you've got uh, traditional British Wicca going, well, no, this is the, the, the landmarks, as it were, right. uh, of, of Wicca. You're not doing this, therefore you're not Wicca. Um, and whether or not we agree with that, people ask that with the modern Golden Dawn groups, and we can ask that with Rosicrucianism. I think the problem with that with Rosicrucianism becomes because we have no evidence of an actual original order there's no one who really has the authority to say yeah okay rosicrucianism rosicrucianism not rosicrucianism rosicrucianism yeah well and you know that's not an uncommon problem in esotericism and has always been such right i mean the the very definition of an esoteric order is that it's secret and therefore you know, that if, uh, if somebody wants to make a claim of authority, then they're either breaking an oath or they're not being, you know, they're not really, they don't really have that authority to begin with. So uh, it, it leaves a, a large vacuum for people to step in who are, uh, you know, charlatans or, uh, you know, confused. And I'm not making any aspersions about any of the groups we're, we've been talking about, but... It is a. Uh, you, you can certainly look historically, like the, the Horos scandal with the Golden Dawn. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they somehow got enough material to to pretend to be secret masters, secret chiefs. Yeah. Uh, and convincingly enough to Mathers that he gave them more material. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the more you publish stuff, the more the stuff is out there, the easier it is for somebody to fake it. It's a fascinating history. <laughs> <laughs> that this whole uh, this whole stream of of hermeticism and Rosicrucianism that winds through the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries, uh, it, full of interesting characters, and <laughs> we just Absolutely. yeah we don't have a ton of time to get into it here. All right, have we exhausted the uh, uh, various Rosicrucian orders? Uh, did we miss any? Oh, I'm, uh, there are like okay. thousands of well, them. Well, I'm sure. <laughs> so. We've hit all the really. We've hit all the ones that are likely to sue, though, so... Okay, that's good, yeah. <laughs> we don't have any money, don't sue us. <laughs> all right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the symbols of the Rosicrucians, and then let's start with the, uh, the Rose Cross itself. Uh, what, kind of, what kind of interpretations have there been of that symbol? Well, you know, lots. Yeah. Um, you know, this is... For anyone who's familiar with the Golden Dawn or the RDC, yeah, uh, this is sort of you know, the one that's known because it's published yeah. everywhere all the time. Um, and I, I, and it's pretty. I don't. It is. It's well. Thank you. This, this one's mine. Yeah. From back in the day. Mm. Um, and I don't know that I need to go hugely into it because it's been published everywhere. Um, but you know, this particular symbolism is used all over the RDC. It's got. The rose in the center, which is used as a, to create ciphers for talismans, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of a minute minundum. It's, it's got the, the, the four elements and spirit. Uh, it's got planetary. It's got alchemical symbolism. It's got more on the back. Um, uh, so, you know, that's sort of one interpretation that the, the rose cross is a symbol of all of creation, um, which itself 
it is hardly unique to the Golden Dawn. You can actually trace that back to um, Dante, well-known Rosicrucian that he was, um, and his, his Rose of Creation in the Divine Comedy, in the, the Paradiso. Um, some forms, uh, if you look into uh, the 17, uh, 17, 16th, 17th, 18th century Rosicrucian um, uh, books of, of emblems, um, which the Golden Dawn is basing this on, mm-hmm. um, you know, it has alchemical symbolism. Um, it doesn't even necessarily include uh, a rose with it. Um, so we see a lot of alchemical references uh, into it. Some are very simple. Some are simply, uh, you know, a cross. Sometimes it's like a black cross with a five-petaled rose, probably referring to uh, the fivefold name of, of God, the, the, the Yeshua. Uh, that was invented uh, uh, by Richelieu, I think, um, when he was trying to convert Jews uh, into <laughs> Christianity through yeah. Kabbalah. Um, uh, so it has the five petal rose, and maybe it has a gold cross uh, in in the center of it. Um, there's this. This is my version for my non-existent Rosicrucian order, <laughs> because I am not starting a Rosicrucian order. I'm trying to figure out the center of my. Here we go. <laughs> it's first. Um, yeah, you certainly put I, a lot of time and effort into something you're not founding. I'm just saying. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm a graphic designer. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so I like to make things. <laughs> um, so here's my, it's, you know, an equal armed cross. Yes. Uh, because Two I'm not of them, Christian. In fact. Uh, so, you know, we have the equal, equilibrium of the elements. Um, and then we've got uh, five, uh, five and se- seven petals on a two tiered rose, um, which I took out of uh, Pythagorean symbolism, actually. Um, so. In Pythagorean numerology, five uh, is a symbol of harmony. It's a number uh, of marriage of opposites, uh, because it has the even and the odd coming together. Um, and then the seven has the, numer- the, the symbolism of the planets. Um, it's it's uh, a number associated with Athena, so it's associated with wisdom as well. So you have the harmony of the marriage of opposites, which is a very uh, alchemical symbolism, al- alchemical symbol, uh, married together with the... Um, the planets and the wisdom of Athena, and that gives you 12 petals so that you've got the, the zodiac or the 12 tribes of Israel or, or whichever 12 symbolism you want you want to throw mm-hmm. in there. Um, so there are, you know, a lot of lots and lots of different versions. Amork has a version. Um, Manly Hall had his own version, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, the, the Golden Dawn's version, the, the a, Crowley's AA has its own version uh, as well. Um, I think commonly you see alchemical symbolism, you see planetary symbolism, um, whether that's based because of the Golden Dawn's influence on everything after you know, the 18, late 1880s, uh, or because you see threes, twelves, uh, sevens as being very common numbers in Christian mysticism. Um, I think both of those are probably quite viable uh, uh, possibilities, if not both of them being true. Mm-hmm. And uh, to kind of close things out here as we're uh, coming to the end of our time, um, what, uh, what kind of Gnostic influences or um, uh, symbols or any of that do you see? I mean, we have to talk about Gnosticism at least once, right? Yeah, of course. Well, it's the Gnostic wisdom network, so mm-hmm. of course. Um, the thing is, I really don't see much at all. Uh-huh. Uh, I see a lot of Platonic symbolism, I would argue, for a late Platonism. Um, if we're talking about Gnosticism in, in the in sort of the more modern Gnosticisms, which seem to have a, a, a much more uh, a late Platonic influence than the you know uh, world-hating dualists uh, of like Sethianism, um, you know we don't see that sort of thing in in the Fama, for instance. They mm-hmm. they it, they're, they like the world. They they want to create a better world, um, and without any sort of reference to to archonic figures or anything like that. Um, given the influence of Campanella on Andre and given the influence of Ficino on Campanella, I think we can make a strong argument for a, a Neoplatonic influence, um, uh, especially through alchemy and a theurgic uh, influence as well, which admittedly is not uh, purely Neoplatonic. We, we, there are we seem to be theurgic forms of classical Gnosticism as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the types of things that I might look for, whether it's archons or, or a evil demiurge or an ignorant demiurge that that's sort of making a really substandard world, I don't think we really see that in uh, classical Rosicrucianism. 
Um, I don't think we really see it in something like the Golden Dawn, even. Um, so, not so much. Yeah, all right. Well, I mean, there's uh, certainly uh, some validity in the um, comparisons to some modern Gnostic organizations. I, I, I think that much as the Rosicrucian orders have changed over the, the centuries, the, you can certainly say the same of Gnosticism. I don't think anybody, um, any contemporary Gnostic would say that what they're doing is exactly, uh, you know, first century, second century, third century Gnosticism. Um, and uh, if they are, then I haven't, <laughs> I haven't talked to them. But that, that's a whole different discussion. Oh, absolutely, which, yes. Which would be <laughs> awesome to have you know, the, the development of the of the Platonic traditions in, in the modern period. Yes, absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, I, I certainly see a lot of overlap between uh, the individuals who are involved in contemporary Gnosticism and occultism generally, but uh, you know, more specifically, uh, you know, Golden Dawn type things and other um, you know, the OTO. There's a lot of OTO Gnostics uh, as well, um, and so in that sense, you do see these ideas popping up still. Uh, in Gnostic circles, um, even if the actual uh, worldviews don't blend particularly well. Absolutely, I, you know this this emphasis on, on gnosis, mm -hmm. um, capital G what, or small G, whatever. <laughs> what you find in, in what you find in like all of the the mystical or religious Platonic traditions, mm -hmm. both the you know, middle and and later Platonism. I think that. I, Actually, it's, it's almost like I've been thinking about this today, what, whether or not Gnosis is explicit in the manifestos or not. Um, I think it's definitely implicit in the chemical wedding, mm -hmm. maybe explicit. I think it's less so in the Fama or the Confessio, though. Um, you know, they don't, because they have this very scientific um, way of expressing uh, Rosicrucianism, it might be implicit in there, um, but it seems like that's much more of a, a modern take on Rosicrucianism that comes out of um, you know Martinism and then in the Golden Dawn uh, and OTO and AA, th things like that. But it's certainly in whether or not it was in classical uh, um, um, Rosicrucianism, uh, it is I think absolutely positively in modern Rosicrucianism. Um, and whether that's you know where that influence comes from, uh, you know that's probably a combination of different places. You know. um, yeah, just completely lost my. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, yeah. in, uh, in, in elements uh, of, um, of Freemasonry, in elements of theosophy, um, certainly there, there's evidence that um, the. Theosophists and the Golden Dawn folk and the OTO folk and um, the, the Martinists were to varying degrees uh, conversant in, you know, like the works of the Amlicus. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it is especially uh, um, demysterious, um, the works of Plato uh, and sort of the mystical interpretations of that that, that we've seen. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. Um, Jonathan, would you like to put our guest on the spot with this final question here? <laughs> Oh yeah, it's the most important question of them all. Yeah. Uh, what is your open source Rosicrucian order and how do I join? Well, of course it doesn't exist. <laughs> of course. Because no one can actually admit to being a Rosicrucian and be a Rosicrucian. Um, this is this is a, a joke uh, that Father Anthony and I have had for, a I think, time. five or six years yeah, now. Yeah, it's a been time. a while. <laughs> At some point where I, 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 I sort of randomly posted, I think when I was more active on Twitter, I am not forming a Rosicrucian society. Um, which is still true. I am absolutely not doing that. I mean, I might so, have Amor, done Amor so. lawyers, if you're watching this right now, he is not. <laughs> I am not forming a Rosicrucian, Rosicrucian society. Rosicrucian society. And I would uh, not call it a Rosicrucian society if I would do so. Um, <laughs> but, my, you know, sort of my, my thought was that when you look at what the Rosicrucian, what the Fama was trying to do, and I'm, I'm admittedly, I'm influenced by Michael Meyer on, on this. They weren't trying to create a magic order. Mm -hmm. you know, they, they were trying to create a society of people who 
communicated and worked with each other and tried to live a, a certain kind of life out there in the world, much more like um, Freemasonry, I, I, I would argue, than like than the Golden Dawn. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's not anything against the Golden Dawn. Uh, it's a good one of what, what it was, but it's not what. I think the FAMA was trying to do, at least from, from Meyer's interpretation of it. Um, and I think the aims of Rosicrucianism um, are laudable, just like the discovery of the fraternity of the most laudable order of the Rosy Cross, as, mm -hmm. as the FAMA's full title. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're about healing people, making the world a better place, uh, disseminating knowledge, um, which I think is best done through a, a, a framework of society of like-minded people getting together. Um, and I could then go into, you know, elements of Aristotle's notions of justice and friendship, which would bore everybody. <laughs> um, but, but I think th those are sort of inherent in the idea of a functioning society, um, you know, that there is maybe influence from the Republic in this. There, there's uh, certainly influence um, from the, the City of the Sun, from, from Ficino and um, Campanella, that... And then the utopic writings of, of Andre, uh, these are societies These are, are not just people who occasionally get together to chant in Hebrew or Latin or Greek <laughs> and wear funny hats and wave sticks around that have been painted brightly colored in bright colors. And again, I'm nothing against that. I did that for years and years. Um, but that to me isn't a society yeah. that that's that's something else. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, uh, always more to say, but uh, the, we are slaves to time, as always. So uh, thank you once again, Dr. Kupperman, for joining us on the show. We always enjoy when you come on uh, the program and share your wisdom with us. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this conversation with Dr. Jeffrey Kupperman about the Rosicrucians. Uh, if you did like this, please go visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash gnostic. Uh, link is on the screen right now, and it's in the description of this, uh, this episode. Um, every little bit that you can support us helps us to grow and make bigger and better programming. We've got a lot of new shows we'd like to start, but we can't do it without your support. Also, subscribe, whether it's on our videos on YouTube or whether it's on your favorite podcast app. Uh, the show goes out uh, in both places. You get the same content in both places. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of our upcoming conversations. Uh, top nurses episodes and stuff like that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and listening once again, depending on how you consume it, and we'll see you next time.